Cupid's Florida Deer with a review on the Piranha Tooth Bar. Now, I made a video about six months ago about why I chose the Piranha Tooth Bar, and I went over four reasons why. That video will be posted at the end. And I said I would do a review video after I've used it for a while. It was unreasonable to, you know, do a review immediately. But I, I've been wanting to do this re review video a lot sooner, but it's just, you know, things get in the way and so it's six months later and that has allowed quite a bit of time with the with the tooth bar probably 50 plus hours with the thing on on the bucket here and uh, but I'll give you a breakdown of the good the bad and the ugly with the tooth bar and the ugly really has nothing to do with the tooth bar necessarily but you'll see at the end so anyways here we go Okay, so we just wanted to show you the tooth bar. It is certainly more dirty than it used to be. And it has shown a little tiny bit of wear. If you really look at the edges, you can tell that there's a tiny bit of wear on the teeth. And But it has not become loose at all. Both, both bolts are tight. And again, that installation was super easy to do. And I'll get into the good, which is mostly pretty much a lot of good that I like about it. And then the bad, which isn't really a function of the tooth bar itself, but rather the bucket combination of the two. And I'll get into talking about why I think that's an issue. And uh, anyways, stay tuned and we'll go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if you haven't yet, Please consider subscribing at the end of the video or during the video in the lower right hand corner or the upper left hand corner at the end. And if you like the video, hit the like button too. Thanks. So point number one of the good is that I was concerned about the fuck it being able to back drag after I put the tooth bar on and it back drags just fine. In fact, I would say that it probably back drags a little bit better through stone and kind of loose material like that than it did before I put the tooth bar on and I think it just kind of separates it and allows it to go over and over it nicely and sort of grade it out instead of just lumping over you know uh, parts of the uh, the aggregate that that you'd be doing like say in the driveway or something like that so that really hasn't been an issue so that's good so while this isn't perfect it's pretty good. Had I not put all the leaves and the other yard debris in here, I think it would have been easier to smooth this out. And plus it rained pretty good yesterday and that wetter, more wet, whatever. Dirt does not make for good spreading. So I think it turned out pretty good though, despite those two challenges. I can't really get too low where you can kind of see it, but it's, I don't know what you can see, but it's, relatively flat I'll go over it with the, the hand rake just a little bit but most of it's there's no large lumps to deal with so that's good hey buddy mm -hmm. yeah say hi I think the fence is going to affect his ability to run around in the same routes that he did before so, he'll just have to get used to that. Good point number two. It's easy to open a bag up on the edge of that tooth bar. So, good point number three is this piranha tooth bar is good at ripping up loose roots while you're doing stump grinding or other, you know, land clearing operations. Uh, mostly for me, it's when I'm doing some stump grinding, I get a loose root out there and the uh, uh, piranha tooth bar can rip it up. Now you could probably do the same with a, a heavy hitch tooth bar and it might be even more effective with that particular type of uh, tooth bar. So anyway. So good point number four, 
surface digging or scraping. This was for a customer that wanted a parking pad for his RV. And I probably should have brought, you know, took some more pictures, maybe took a little bit of video, but I try to be somewhat respectful of their privacy. So this is what I got. And so what I initially did was tried to work this area with the box blade and didn't go very well, so I started using the scraper blade. Where you're standing right now and looking at this place is where there, the higher ground is, and it's a slight slope down to further away in this picture. Same thing in this picture. You're looking at the high ground and then going you know, to the lower. And uh, once I used the tooth bar, it did the job super easy and so he had some we had to scrape it out first and he brought some he had a guy drop off some base which is what you see here and we spread that out once we got the hole sort of dug and it ended up being a really easy job I was pretty excited about it I was uh, just about how it turned out so well with the with the box or the back dragging and also the final picture coming up here is when the gravel was brought in the next day I came back and finished the job and I think it looks really really good it was really smooth really even and we squared away the corners and he's actually going to put an RV carport over it as well but the job turned out really well thanks to the tooth bar okay so one of the issues that I make this sort of a little bit of a bummer and this would be the case with any tooth bar and it's really not so much the tooth bar whether you have a heavy hitch or whether you have a piranha but it's also that the John Deere bucket sticks out a few more inches here and it has a rolled back so it's kind of hard to kind of hard to say but if this was straight back it'd probably be I know I'm like off into the air there but we're talking about something like 20 Four inches there to the end of the bucket okay and then the tooth bar sticks out let's see another three and a half inches so and what I mean by that is if you look at this is a 140 bucket but this is very similar to what a lot of the other brands have and as you can see it's about 15 inches a couple of them might be a little bit shorter or smaller than that I mean, shorter or longer than that, but that's, you know, the John, the one series bucket is way out here, like nine inches longer than this. Plus you add the three and a half inches to the, uh, for the, for the tooth bar, and then you'll get this. So I'm not sure I'm gonna actually explain this correctly, but as you can see, as I dump in there, the boom is all the way up and the, bucket really can't unload the bucket fully because the edge of the bucket is so far into the bed of the truck already and I noticed this a while back even before I had the piranha tooth bar is that my 445 with the 40 loader could really the boom would go up, but basically as far as it does on the 1023 but it had a shorter bucket so the bucket was able to empty easier so I know I might be splitting hairs here but it, it's sort of a pain in the butt I don't it's not really the, the piranha tooth bar makes it sort of worse but it's already an issue that I had with the longer bucket so it's not a huge issue it's just a little bit of a pain and not the tooth bar small entirely and we have the ugly. You know, if you leave the bucket up with a tooth bar on it, of course, then you walk by it carelessly, you can slash your calf muscle and uh, make a nice little uh, nasty cut on the back of your leg. So that's something you should try to stay away from. Well, I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can hit the subscribe button in the upper left hand corner and there's a couple other videos coming up that might interest you as well. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great night.